I'm Carl Brazil. Um, it's great to be in France, Paris, Paris again. Uh, played here many times. But, um, this is a pretty special venue, the Bercy, so it's good to be back and it's great to meet you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I didn't know I was going to be professional, but it but it, it was all I wanted. So yeah. I, I used to come home from school and run up the road, and I had until six o'clock to practice in in the garage. And my dad sort of made this soundproof room, which wasn't that soundproof because the neighbours were still shut up, you know. But he made it. He, dad, dad was great. He made a real effort to make me this room, and I had until six o'clock to play. And. Uh, I always thought in my head, well, I used to put my earphones on and say, which, which band am I going to play with tonight? And it could be Journey or it could have been The Eagles or Mr. Mister even. It could have been anyone, but it was all, all great stuff. And I used to run up the road just thinking I'm going to close my eyes and be in that band tonight. And then I guess once I got to a certain stage and you realise we're playing with other people, when I was a kid, people were like, yeah, he's, he's, he's good for his age, you know, and I, it gave me a bit of confidence. And in my head, I was just, I was wondering how I was going to get to do what I'm doing now. I was like, how, how do you do that? It's a million dollar question. Every kid that now asks me, how do I get a job with so-and-so or Justin Bieber or whatever? I don't, and it, there's no uh, particular path, really. You kind of ask to just get into the world, play, meet people, and hopefully you get, everyone gets an opportunity at some stage. But in my head, I think I always thought I was going to do something. I just didn't know what. And ironically, I auditioned for Robbie Williams when I was 17, I think, 17 or 18. It's actually on YouTube. Go and have a look at it. But it's, um, I had long hair, ponytail, lots of spots, terrible clothes. So I went in and played and uh, I did all right. I did all right, but I was too young for the gig. And um, funny because Guy Chambers is the MD now. And when I said to him, you know, I came on audition years and years ago. He went, really? I said, yeah, that's me. And now here I am on the gig after all those years. It's bizarre, bizarre circle. But, um, yeah, I guess I'd, I, I don't know what I'd do if I wasn't playing drums. I have no idea. I'd be something in music, but um, yeah, there's no stopping me from what, doing what I'm doing, that's for sure. So playing on the Heavy Entertainment Show with Robbie is a high-energy gig it's very expressive um i mean literally from the first bar it's bang it's a big show he's just like the modern day elvis and requires requires an energetic band requires everyone to be on the game there's not really room for error on, on a, at all like this any any big gig i don't think i think you you have two hours to play on stage so the focus and playing to clicks and keeping the groove, not dropping a beat. Okay, for stick breaks, you can't help that. But I like to pride myself on not making a mistake. I'd really beat myself up if something's happened. And things do happen. We all make mistakes. But I think it's a good mindset to just say, I'm, I'm a professional. This is what I do. And it's, uh, it's a bit like being a footballer and telling yourself that you're not going to give the ball away. It's the, that's a similar example. But I also think... Um, like I just said a moment ago, playing at this level, these shows have been swiddled in stadium shows, and there's kind of, I've noticed in the bigger the space with the drum sound, as soon as you put too much in, if everybody's putting too much in, it just sounds a mush out front. So I've started making feel bigger by just giving them space. So that, instead of because it just as, as much as I want to do that it just doesn't come across it just sounds like a what it's just a bit of a must show good example of that sort of drumming who I love I love you Mickey Curry Mickey Curry Brian Adams what a drummer and that's 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 it he's the perfect example of playing tasty fills like less less is more thing you know so I found from doing, playing with James and Robbie even though they're they're both very different gigs. They both require extremely good body clock timekeeping and listening to the, the artist, listening to when they're talking, to when you start songs at the right place, and watching for an ending in case he's, you know, he's doing something in the air with the crowd, or uh, in James's case, um, he might want to pull a tempo back. And so keeping an eye on the artist all the time is, is essential, I think, as a drummer.